Find the general solution of the differential equation y prime plus xy equals zero. Once you have the general solution, find the specific solution where y zero equals minus one, and then sketch all solutions in the xy plane. To find the general solution, we're gonna use the method of separation of variables. So the idea is gonna be, we move all the x stuff to one side, move all the y stuff to the other, two things are equal, any derivatives will be equal up to a constant, and then we'll try to figure out what we can do from there. So I have y prime plus xy equals zero. I'll move the xy to the right side, divide both sides by y. That gives me y prime over y equals minus x. Now I'll rewrite y prime as dy over dx and move the dx to the x side. Take the antiderivative of both sides. Any derivative of minus x, well, we're gonna add one, flip it over to the exponent of one, so I'll have minus x squared over two, plus a constant of integration, which we'll keep on this side. On the other side, I have dy over y, so the antiderivative of that will be natural log of y. All right, so I have the equation, natural log of y equals minus x squared over two, plus a constant. But when I get rid of the natural log, well, two numbers are equal. E to both of those numbers will stay equal. So in this case, we're gonna have E to the natural log of Y, that's gonna be equal to Y, equals E to the minus X squared over two, plus a constant. Now, we can rewrite E to the minus X squared over two, plus C, as E to the minus X squared over two, times E to the C. It'll be better just to write e to the c as k for when we go for specific solutions, so we'll do that. Also note, e to the c is always a positive number, but it'll be just fine to let k be negative. If you put that through your differential equation, you'll note you'll still have perfectly valid solutions with a negative k. So our general solution is y of x equals k e to the minus x squared over two. We could check our answer. We'll do that by taking our solution, putting it back into the original differential equation. So what's y prime? Well, the k stays where it is, and then the rule for the derivative of e to the function is gonna be e to your function and then times the derivative of your function. That's just the chain rule. So derivative of our function is gonna be the derivative of minus x squared over two. Okay, the two comes down, take one off the exponent, so that gives me minus x. Now, if you notice, what's y prime? We just saw that y prime is, take your original function, multiply by minus x. This is actually a check for the differential equation that we're given. If you note, if I push the xy to the other side, it says the derivative is just take your original function and multiply by minus x. So here, we know that we did our derivative correctly because it agrees with our differential equation. Okay, now, kind of an anticlimax. If I take x times y, I just get x times our original equation. And then if I add y prime to xy, we see we get zero. Now let's look for a specific solution. We want y zero equal to minus one. So if I put zero into our general solution, we get k times e to the zero e to the zero is equal to one, so we'll have y zero equal to k. By assumption, that's also equal to minus one, so my specific solution has k equal to minus one. So specific solution is y of x equals minus e to the minus x squared over two. Okay, let's sketch this. This will help us get the sketch of all solutions in the xy plane. So. What can we do without taking a derivative? Well, we know where there's a point. Y zero is minus one. So we'll call that minus one right there. Then what else do we have? If I take the limit as our function goes off to minus infinity or plus infinity, what do we have? Well, we're looking at minus e to the minus x squared over two. That's the same as a minus one over e to the x squared over two. Our e to the x squared over two as we go to plus infinity or minus infinity, 
this is going to get large without bound. So we're looking at 1 over a very large number going off to infinity. So on either side, it's going to go off to 0. So we'll have a horizontal asymptote for the x-axis on both sides of our graph. So here, this is going to have to go up to the x-axis in that direction, x-axis in this direction. Now, with the derivative, what do we have? Well, remember our rule, okay, if I want the derivative, I just take the function, multiply by minus x. So we have x e to the minus x squared over 2. e to the minus x squared over 2, no matter what you put in there, positive number comes out. So the sine of y prime only depends on the sine of x. So if x is bigger than 0, y prime is positive, and we're increasing. If x is less than 0, y prime is going to be negative, and we're decreasing. And also note, at 0, we're going to have a critical point. OK, so here, on this side, I'm increasing, which we would have gotten going up to the horizontal asymptote. On this side, we're decreasing, so that's going down to our point on the y-axis. So that's my graph for the specific solution. Now, we want all solutions, so let's take a look at what the relation between any given specific solution is to the one we have here. So note, the only change would be putting a k in front. So that's just going to be taking our specific solution, multiplying by all the different numbers that we can. OK, one interesting one. If I multiply by 0, what happens? That's just going to send us to y equal to 0. And so the solution for k equals 0 is just the x-axis. How about other ones? If I multiply, OK, we let k be equal to 1. We multiply by a minus 1 on our specific solution. What's the net effect? That just flips y values from negative to positive. So it's just going to be the mirror image of our original solution. Say I multiply by 2. So if I want k equal to minus 2, that's just going to stretch our y values out by a factor of 2. So that would, say, push our original specific solution to this one down here. Same thing if we go above. If I take this one and multiply by 2, it just stretches it up to there. So that's our sketch for all solutions in the xy plane.